So I'm Lee Constantine here with Creating Genius Magazine, and we're interviewing Mr. Freeman White III over at uh, Freemind Studios. So, Freeman, uh, tell me about tell me about all this and what you do here at, at FES. Okay, uh, Freemind Studios is an all media creative space in downtown Las Vegas, the the heart and the beginning of Las Vegas, um, kind of the epicenter of some of the new. Um, revitalizations that are happening mm -hmm. in the city, one of them. And uh, what we do here is everything pretty much in the visual arts space. So we use the visual arts to tell stories uh, about brands and to tell uh, individual entrepreneur stories. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned EAT. What, what are some other big brands or big projects that you've worked on recently that are noteworthy? Uh, we work all over. Uh, basically all over the country. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've shot in uh, North Carolina, we've shot in New York, in Utah, uh, and those are, you know, different kind of, cl the clients are the catalyst mm -hmm. for those projects. Sure. Um, you know, uh, some of our notable projects, we did the entire uh, Kevin Hart Heartbeat Weekend mm -hmm. here in Las Vegas at, um, at the Cosmopolitan of Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've uh, just finished a, a large Google live stream, multi-cam live wow. stream at the uh, Inspire Theater, right around the corner. Nice, okay. On the corner of Fremont, Las Vegas Boulevard. <laughs> We're working on a, a feature film that's an international action th thriller that will uh, we'll be in five countries. We'll be shooting in five countries. Okay. Um, and that will have that, that'll be done before the end of summer. So are you guys more like on the creative side or like the logistical side or is it kind of all into one big package for these brands or, you know, what are the services exactly that you could provide them? Well, we do creative services. Mm -hmm. So say if you're a, a brand or an entrepreneur and you come in and, and you, um, we begin yeah. uh, with the story because everything happens, you know, er, er, all the information you get out in order to kind of engage an audience, they want to know the story. They don't want to buy from you know, right. a big conglomerate anymore. So one of the things we do is uh, we get our creative team together. We have a uh, media lab upstairs that has a whiteboard paint mm -hmm. on both walls. And basically the, the, the entrepreneur or the brand tells their story and um, all of our creative team is there and we take notes and then when they leave, we begin to kind of just throw ideas on the wall. And my job as the director of production is to kind of uh, take these, these super creative, outside the box thinkers and um, that we have here at Fremont East and, and, and kind of t take their ideas and make it make sense in terms of budget, logistics, right. and execution. <clears throat> um, and that's, that's a lot of what I do. So tell me a bit about your background. Like, what, what's your story, and how did you know? How did this? Where did this story start, and how did it evolve into what Fremont East is today, and what you're doing today? Wow. Okay. This is. You got you got that much time. And here, like, like what, yeah, like yeah. what, <laughs> what was the moment you knew? You know, I mean, I guess how can you conceptualize? You probably didn't envision Fremont East Studios, Vegas, like working with Google and, and all these people, but. When did it start and when did you know this was what you wanted to do? Um, I uh, went to University of Nebraska in college mm -hmm. and I majored in horticulture. And during, the, during uh, the course of that, I had a oral presentation on Buccellodactyloides, which is buffalo grass, mm -hmm. which is a pretty common turf grass now, but back then it was a, just a uh, cultivated variety, so mm -hmm. it was a kind of a new grass. So I did. I was supposed to do an oral presentation. I ended up doing um, doing a small documentary on it. Okay. Because I didn't like standing up in front of a lot of people, which is not like me now. But it was like deviating from the initial project and kind of going above and beyond what you were supposed to do, and it just yeah. Well, what I, is that? I had a girlfriend that was a journalism major, <laughs> okay. so she um, she helped me with the cameras. And then we uh, edited tape to tape, you know, mm -hmm. two VHS decks, and it actually aired on, you know, public access television in Lincoln, Nebraska. Wow. And uh, yeah, so that experience kind of really made me turn towards the visual arts. Yeah. 
Uh, during that time, my father retired, relocated to Kansas City, Missouri, and mm -hmm. opened a place where you, in the mall, where you make your own music video. Mm -hmm. It's blue screen technology, and chroma keying. I moved into Brooklyn. I got a little small studio apartment in Brooklyn, New York, in Cobble Hill, and I, um, I started PAing. And I worked with a group uh, of young filmmakers and, and musicians and music producers at, uh, at a place called Ozone Entertainment. And there, I started, we started doing our own projects and um, a lot of music videos and mm -hmm. a lot of uh, short films and things. And we were in the festivals. And um, as I was uh, working there, I met Wesley Snipes, who, you know, did a lot of stuff, you know, in the industry. Right. Okay. Um, you know, Outside of his acting career, he did something on the scene as well. Outside of his acting career, supporting young filmmakers. Uh, I got an uh, opportunity through him to be in the film The Fan. Because he's like, hey, man, yeah, you, you know, he used to he used to come to uh, parties at the at our place. So we had a lot of parties, a lot of great independent artists, and it was it was kind of a cultural center. There'd be art on the walls. It was really a mm -hmm. really interesting place, right in the lower tip of Manhattan, right by the Staten Island Ferry. And um, he said, "Hey, didn't you play? Uh, you used to play uh, baseball." I was like, "Nah, I was actually football." But yeah, he's like, <laughs> "Yeah, sure. I, I mean, yeah. Whatever you want me to play." Yeah, he's like, "I'm doing this movie, man." And, you know, because I was always saying, "Man, I want to go out to California." Yeah. I always wanted to go to California. I said, "I really want to go out to California." And he's like, "Well, I'm doing this movie. It's called The Fan. I can give you the casting uh, director's number if mm -hmm. you were called." You know, so I gave her a call, and she's like, "Yeah, come down." I had dreadlocks at the time. It made me shave my dreadlocks. Oh, off. really? And I was out on a plane to Anaheim. I was there for three months. So my first three months in uh, on the West Coast were, you know, in Anaheim, mm -hmm. uh, working on that film. And then um, from there, I did the same thing. I st I was at that point. I was like acing and camera operating mm -hmm. and doing some director photography gigs. And then um, I uh, had an opportunity to produce my first film. So I was doing like any job I could do. I was doing mm -hmm. a lot of construction, you know, because I have a, a background plumbing, electrical, mm -hmm. and things like that. So I did a lot of construction, but on the side, we were working on this, you know, this narrative feature film that with a $75,000 SAG experimental budget. And uh, once we completed that film, mm -hmm. uh, we were in the first time filmmakers program um, at Kodak and Panavision, and Kodak had, uh, gave us a screening. In, in one of their screening rooms. So fast forward to Vegas or Fremont East Studios. How did, you know, what brought you to Vegas? And was Fremont East already around before? I mean, probably not. Well, after the, um, after I did my first feature, uh, we invited, you know, everyone I knew, including Snipes, including Wesley, to come see the film. Mm -hmm. He came, he saw the film, and he said, uh, after film, I want to offer you a job. You know, you, I clearly know about filmmaking. That's what I do. Um, so I, there's an assistant position opening mm -hmm. up as one of his assistants. And uh, I did that job for three months. Then I got fired because I wasn't very good at fetching. You know? but he's, and, and the way he did it was super cool. Because so I was fired. And within the same conversation, he goes, but I would like to offer you the position as manager of operations of Amon Ra Films, which was his film company. One of the responsibilities that I had, uh, they, uh, Wesley and a, a bunch of bunch mm -hmm. of people, I think Lawrence Fishburne was involved, uh, the casting director Reed, mm -hmm. uh, in creating a studio called the World Talent Showcase, and this was, you know, it was years before its time. It would have, it was a, a crew, cast, and production database kind of epicenter where uh, people could also, talented people could come in and, and, and basically put their reels together mm -hmm. online. So it was kind of serviced, not only the talent side, but also the crew and, and, and things like that. And so Billy, uh, we built that studio out um, and I operated that for about three years and then the funding for that project dried up. Mm -hmm. And at that time, you know, I really enjoyed the studio life. Mm -hmm. I was editing films and I was, I was doing a lot of things, so I, I love I love studios. So I um, I kept the studio. So I st I took over the mortgage, or I took over the rent, and I paid the rent and ran that for eight years as I did other jobs. Wow. So that was uh, but it you know it was a yeah. catalyst for a lot of things. For sure. You know, having a brick and mortar, 
location is 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 really big, especially in the um in the filmmaking world because a lot of people mm -hmm. work out of their house. And then Shoot. you guys became a success there, and you did that lead to Vegas, or you know where's that gap so in, in time? That studio. There was a young woman who came in as talent, uh, and her name was uh, Mimi Pham, and she was like, you know probably 23, 24 at the time, and maybe even younger. And was a mm. when I met her, she was talent. And talent in running a business? Like casting. Okay. Talent. Okay. And so she would, she I see, would okay. act and, and um, you know, she would sure. come in for the castings. Mm -hmm. And that lasted very shortly. And then I noticed, well, she's running these castings for the casting directors. So I like, I need to talk to that young lady. Um, and that woman now is the founder of free money studios so she did that for a while she ran castings she worked you know she kind of built ran her way up the corporate ladder and um she is the one who funded the studio here she's a friend of the downtown project and tony shea and um she entered she sent me the book delivering happiness and i read that i was like it's pretty cool She's like, well, I want you to come down to downtown Vegas and mm -hmm. kind of look around and, you know, meet some of the other production companies that are already here. Because it was like there were there were already some some pretty major companies here mm -hmm. when I got here. Um, but but it the, the kind of boutique studio feel that's a creative space for people to come in and just kind of go wild that they, you know, felt like that was missing. So she was the person to bring your studio to what it is today, or she was the person that you needed to, you know, run run the business side of things while you did your creative thing, or you know, what was that dynamic like? Both. Both. Yeah. She actually does a lot of the behind the scenes, uh, wheeling and dealing, kind of setting up the structure of how we do business. Mm -hmm. You know how we run business through Free Money East. And she was also the catalyst that that introduced me to the project and, and basically brought me out here. So you've been in Vegas for how long now? Two and a half. Two and a half years. And you've had, you've grown since? Since, yeah. I mean, obviously with the new place, more people, more clients, I guess, or more more projects. You know, how is Vegas like a real source of, I guess, influence for Free Mind East and whatever, in what you are doing? Man. So like why Vegas, Vegas as a city is is an amazing canvas for a visual storyteller because there's there's every type of human existence here that you could imagine from mm -hmm. the extremely you know wealthy to you know people that are down and out. Mm -hmm. And so I you know as a as a filmmaker I'm a student of human nature. So the stories that uh that I've come across and that I I I revealed here um have been have been amazing, and then visually, the city of Las Vegas and Nevada as a state. I mean, this this region is mm -hmm. is it, it's so complex and it's so ever changing because you can drive you know a half hour in one direction and you know be in Mount Charleston and shooting in the snow, mm -hmm. and then you know drive to um, you know Rye Light and shoot you know a hundred year old like half decrepit. Mm -hmm. um, a vacated abandoned city you know and then you could you know go to the Colorado River and and shoot like people river so it's, the diverse landscape is is huge for a, a creative like yourself absolutely it's and with huge. everything that's going on in Vegas downtown the entrepreneur community is growing how does that influence what you're doing in this community in a lot of ways it uh, for one we cover a lot of it in in different ways sometimes mm -hmm. we live stream talks Sometimes we shoot them to the can, or sometimes we follow them and, and kind of tell their story. Um, the one thing I've found, uh, you know, more than anything else, I've learned so much from all mm -hmm. the really sharp and, and passionate and smart people that I've mm -hmm. come across down here. Like, that's probably the main thing I'll take away, that things that I uh, thought I knew, mm -hmm. I, I don't really know. Like, you know, there's so many smart people down here. I just happy to be Just trying to connect with them and... Yeah. Go forward. Yeah. So, uh, so what's next for, for Freeman White and Freeman New Studios? Well, we just secured funds for a international action thriller that shoots in five countries. So that will be the first feature film that is exclusively produced out of Freeman New Studios, mm -hmm. and um, it will be uh, it will be a pretty 
awesome action ride. Something to look forward to for. Something to look forward to, yeah. yeah. For, what kind of reach would that have after that's done? I mean, where, where would someone like me be able to, to see that or would I not? Is that more of like an exclusive? Well, the goal in any film, like, you, you know, you're, you're, you want to have, you want to uh, secure a theatric release. Mm -hmm. So in movie theaters, uh, you know, best it's case It's like scenario, the big time, yeah, obviously. Yeah, you okay. want to see it in the movie theaters. But, um, you know, it, it'll be available at some point digitally. For sure. Know, the whole world is moving that way. So awesome. um, all of filmmaking is. Well, cool. Well, all right. Uh, thanks for uh, meeting with Crazy Genius and uh, yeah, Freeman, Freeman White.